Hey, what's up? Back again. First base note hit me in the chest, and I was just like, there's no way that's too late. MB Enclosures it has his own YouTube channel, and this guy is an animal when it comes to designing boxes. And What's up? Welcome to the channel. It's MB. I'm MB of MB of Enclosures. This is my channel. Here you get my thoughts the way, hey, I want my wife put it so close together, take this out here, what me think. <laughs> okay, but some of it's facts and some of it, and I'm here to differentiate between fact and fiction. I get a lot of, I have gotten a lot of questions. What is amplified dampening? I hear you always talking about AMB, what is it? I'll give you a quick lesson in it and why I think it's very, very important. Let's go back to high school. Remember when you was put wrong wounds of wire on, say, a, a windmill or some kind of former, and you would put that inside a magnet, and you, you, you would use some kind of energy in nature to cause that wire to spin within a magnet? And when you put up a, positive, a, wire, a negative to the negative uh, side of the magnet and a P to the positive side, a positive wire to, to let's say, a light bulb, a little small five, two wide light bulb, as the wind spent the windmill, the coil would spin inside the magnet and you would get electricity. It would light the light bulb up, science projects. Did anybody do that? I did it. Or you would take a water hose and mimic a waterfall, find a creek outside and put whatever you have made. The water flowing down the stream would cause the coils to spin inside the magnet. It's on some form and you would generate electricity. Hmm. Remember that concept. Now let's go to this. This is an electromagnetic magnet right here. These are coils of wire on a former. This is a permanent magnet. It has a north pole here and the south pole brought up from the back plate, which shoots up through the magnet. It brings the south pole here. So you have your north pole and your south pole. You have your windings going into the gap, right? There is no magnetic, there's no magnetic property right there because power has not been applied to the voice cord. The amplifier applies power to the voice cord. It starts to do this. As it's moving back and forth, reacting to the, the electricity coming from the amp, it's also doing the same thing that you did in high school by moving coils in a magnet. It's generating its own, it's causing its own electricity. It's using electricity and it's causing and it's generating its own field that's resisting the energy that's been applied through it to the wire from the amplifier. That is coming back through the wire to the amplifier. Your amplifier must be able to calculate that, limit that. Stop that dampening, dampening, stop that. So that the woofer will continue to do what it's instructing it to do and not do what it's what not react to the energy that it's creating on its own by moving inside the permanent magnet. So as it's moving back and forth under the under the power of the amplifier, it's creating its own electricity because you still got wire move within a magnet, a permanent magnet. That's interfering with the energy, the positive and negative AC that's, that's telling it what to do. A good amplifier can calculate that, and it's, it's basically dealing with the amplifier's output impedance. Its output impedance is factored on, and here we go into box rise. Here we go by box rise. Box rise. Everybody know you're going to get box rise. When you put a, a subwoofer inside a cabinet, the air acting upon it, the length of the wire, all of these things are going to affect the, out, the output and penis coming from the amplifier. It needs to be fairly low and be able to compensate for what's the feedback that it's getting back. That's dampening. The higher the amplifier dampening, the ability of the amplifier to stay on the, to control the subwoofer on its own power and not react to the feedback coming through the wire enables you to have a good clean base. It's very important for people who have uh, sound quality systems. 
to have a dampifier amplify with high dampening to minimize or cancel that distortion, that feedback that's coming from the voice core as it moves, the wire moving through the, through the pattern, it's creating its own electricity. You're acting, you, you're moving. This, this becomes an electromagnetic magnet because of electricity. But why it's moving inside the pole, it's generating its own at the same time, which is trying to come back through the wire and interfere with the instructions from the amplifier. The higher the number, the better. You can get too high, though. You can get too high, but I'm like, in cardio, you don't have to worry about that. But an amplifier that does not list its dampening factor, in my opinion, I'm not going to run it. Because you, you're not telling me what is your ability to counteract the feedback that you're getting from the wire from the subwoofer. The higher the number, the better. The more impactful and cleaner your sound. The less wattage you need, the higher the dampening factor, the louder the bass. 200 watts, 250 watts with a dampening factor of an amplifier of 500, it's going to sound a lot better than 200 watts from an amplifier that has less than 100 dampening. Same wattage. Remember I told y'all about gas. Gas, 87, 89, 93. It's the same wattage, true enough. Yes, yeah, 200 watts. But 250 watts, highly damped. It's going to be a lot more impactful, control the subwoofer for better than 200 watts with a dampening factor of less than 100. That's one of the reasons why I went from my father's gate to my dual design M2000. I went from 150 to 400. Sounds a lot better. And I got more power, too. But that's a quick lesson on dampening because I know y'all got a short attention span. How long has that been? Uh, six oh, that's it. Stop. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>